16 plus 8 plus 8. So we need to add these three numbers together. And the way I like to do this is to start by adding the smaller numbers together, because remember, with addition, order doesn't matter. So 8 plus 8 is 16, and then we can add the larger number to that, so 16 plus 16. 6 plus 6 is 12, so 1, 2. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So our answer is 32. 703 plus 100 is 803. Because we have 700s, we're adding 100. So in our answer, we have 800s. You could use column addition for this. So 3 plus 0 is 3. 0 plus 0 is 0. And 7 plus 1 is 8. But to save time, try to use mental methods rather than the column method where you can. 87 times 1. Any number times 1 is just that number. So our answer is 87. 893 plus 27. So we can set this out as a column addition making sure we've got our digits lined up on the right-hand side. 3 plus 7 is 10, so 1, 0. 1 plus 9 plus 2 is 12, so 1, 2. And 1 plus 8 is 9, so our answer is 920. Now, 305 times 0. So any number times 0 is 0, so that's our answer. 491 minus 8. So we can set this out as a column subtraction, making sure we've got our 8 in our 1's column. We can't do 1 minus 8, so we go to the left, 1 less, 1 in front. And now, 11 minus 8 is 3, 8 minus nothing is 8, and 4 minus nothing is 4. So our answer is 483. But we could have used mental methods here. Starting with 491, we could take away 1 to get to 490, and then from 490, take away 7 to get to our answer. Because if we subtract 1 and then subtract 7, we've subtracted 8 altogether. Or we could have used a different mental method. From 491, we could have subtracted 10 to get to 481, but that's subtracting 10 and we only want to subtract 8. So subtracting 10 means we've subtracted 2 too many. So we need to adjust by adding 2 to get 483. So if we take away 10 and then add 2, that's the same as taking away 8. 6 times 8. So if we don't know, we can count up in 8s. So 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and the sixth multiple of 8 is 48. So that's our answer. Now, 36 divided by 3. Remember, a division is the inverse to multiplication. And we know that 10 times 3 must be 30. So 11 times 3 is 33. And if we add another 3, 12 times 3 is is 36, and that means that going the other way, 36 divided by 3 must be 12, so there's our answer. Now, 2639 plus 1447. 9 plus 7 
is 16, so 1, 6. 1 plus 3 plus 4 is 8. 6 plus 4 is 10, so 1, 0. And 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4. So our answer is 4086. 234 minus 91. So we can set this out as a column subtraction, making sure that we've got our place values lined up. Now 4 minus 1 is 3. We can't do 3 minus 9, so we go to the left, 1 less, 1 in front. 13 minus 9 is 4, and 1 minus nothing is 1. So our answer is 143. Now here we need to subtract fractions and we have denominators that are the same. So in our answer we keep the denominators the same and just subtract the numerators. 9 minus 1 is 8, so our answer is 8 elevenths. Next we have 8 and then a little 2, which we read as 8 squared. Now this little 2 means multiply the number by itself. So 8 squared means that we need to work out 8 times 8. If we don't know, we can count up 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, and then the 8th multiple of 8 is 64. So 8 times 8 is 64, which means that 8 squared is 64. 7.6 minus 5.2. So we can set this out as a column subtraction, making sure that we've got our decimal points lined up, because if our decimal points are lined up, that means our ones and tenths columns will be lined up as well. Now, so that we don't forget, let's copy the decimal point down into our answer, so that's lined up as well. And now, 6 minus 2 is 4, 7 minus 5 is 2, so our answer is 2.4. 5 times 4 times 2. So 5 times 4 is 20, and then we need to take that 20 and multiply it by the last number in our multiplication, so we need to work out 20 times 2. That's 40, because 2 times 2 is 4, and then if we have 1 and 0 in the multiplication question, we will have 1 and 0 in our answer. So 5 times 4 times 2 is 40. Now 75 times 6, so we need to use column multiplication. 5 times 6 is 30. If we don't know, we can count 6, 12, 18, 24, and the fifth multiple of 6 is 30, and now we need to work out 7 times 6. But before we do that, because the 7 is in our tens column, we need to write a 0 in our ones. Now 7 times 6, if we don't know, we can keep counting, so 6 times 6 is 36, and 7 times 6 is 42. Finally, we can just add up our answer lines, so we have 450. We could also use short multiplication here. So 75 times 6, again we start with 5 times 6, which we know is 30, but instead of writing it in the answer line, we can write 30 as 3, 0, so with the 3 up here. Now, 7 times 6 is 42, 
but we need to add the 3 up here. And 42 plus 3 is 45. So that goes in our answer line. So 75 times 6 is 450. Now, one-fifth of 75. So to find a fraction of a number, we need to divide by the denominator. So we need to work out 75 divided by 5. And then the numerators are 1, so we don't need to do any multiplication after that. We just need 75 divided by 5. So... 7 divided by 5, well the first multiple of 5 is 5, and then the next one's 10, but that's too many, so we stop at 5, and because that's 1 times 5, we write 1 in our answer line. Now, we subtract, and 7 minus 5 is 2, we can bring down this 5, and we have 25 divided by 5. That's exactly 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. And to show that we don't have a remainder, we can show the subtraction. We could also use short division. So 7 divided by 5 is 1 remainder 2, because 1 times 5 is 5. But then to get to 7, we need to add 2. Then 25 divided by 5 is 5. So, 1 fifth of 75 is 15. Now, we have 6.1 times 10. And whenever we're timesing or dividing a decimal number by 10, 100 or 1000, we always start by writing out the number, then copying down the decimal point. We're multiplying, so the number will be getting bigger, which means that we're moving the digits to the left, and we're multiplying by 10, which has one zero, so the digits are moving one square to the left. So if we copy this six down one square to the left, copy the one down one square to the left, we now have the decimal point at the end of our number. And if the decimal point is at the end of a number, we have a whole number. So our answer is 61. 576 divided by 4. So to start, we have 5 divided by 4. Well, 1 times 4 is 4. And because that's 1 times, we write 1 in our answer line. Now we subtract 5 minus 4 is 1, and we bring down the 7. So we have 17 divided by 4. The closest multiple of 4 to 17, which is still less than 17, is 16. And because 16 is 4 times 4, we need to write 4 in our answer line. Now, again, we subtract. 17 minus 16 is 1, and we can bring down the 6. So we have 16 divided by 4. That's exactly 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. And then we can subtract to show that we don't have a remainder. We could also use short division here. So, 5 divided by 4 is 1 remainder 1. 17 divided by 4 is 4 remainder 1, because 4 times 4 is 16, and then one more is 17. And then 16 divided by 4 is 4. So our answer is 144. Now, we need to write this out as a column subtraction. We have 34,555 minus 15,671. 5 minus 1 is 4. We can't do 5 minus 7, so we go to the left, 1 less, 1 in front. 
15 minus 7 is 8. We can't do 4 minus 6, so we go to the left, one less, one in front. 14 minus 6 is 8. We can't do 3 minus 5, so we go to the left, one less, one in front. 13 minus 5 is 8, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So our answer is 18,884. Now, 50 times 30. We know that 5 times 3 is 15, so 50 times 30 is 1,500. That's because if we have two end zeros in a multiplication question, we need two end zeros in our answer. So our answer is 1,500. And it's really important for questions like this that you spot how to do it mentally. You don't want to waste time using the column method for questions like this because you need to see that if numbers end in zeros, we can just do the 5 times 3 and then 2 end zeros in our answer. 0 0.4 is what as a percentage? Well, we know that the first column the first place value column after the decimal point is the tenths column. So that four stands for four tenths. But percent means over a hundred. So we need to use equivalent fractions. Four tenths is equivalent to what over a hundred? Well, we use multiplication to find equivalent fractions and ten times ten is 100, and what we do to the denominator, we also need to do to the numerator. 4 times 10 is 40. So 0 0.4, or 4 tenths, is equivalent to 40 over 100. So that's 40%. And it's really important, it's not 40 over 100%, because percent already tells you over a hundred. Our answer is just 40. Now 2.67 times 5. We can set this out as a column multiplication. But because there's a decimal point in our question, we need the decimal point in our answer. So we need to go down and make sure that our decimal points are lined up. If there are two decimal places in the question, there will be two decimal places in the answer as well. Now, 7 times 5 is 35. Next, we have 6 times 5, but because this 6 is the second digit from the right, we need to write a 0 before doing 6 times 5, which is 30. Now we have 2 times 5, but because this 2 is the third digit from the right, we need to write two zeros before doing 2 times 5, which is 10. Now we just add up our answer lines. We could also use short multiplication here. Again, we need to make sure we have the decimal point lined up down in our answer, and I like to do this first so that I don't forget. Now, 7 times 5 is 35, so 3, 5. 6 times 5 is 30, but we need to add the 3 that we have up here. So 30 plus 3 is 33. So that's 3, 3. Now, 2 times 5 is 10, but we need to add the 3 to that 10, so we have 13. So our answer is 13.35. 42 times 39. 
So we start by multiplying the 2 by the 9. That's 18, so 1, 8. On to the next column, we have 4 times 9, which is 36, plus 1 is 37. Now we can cross out our working and we need to move on to multiplying by this tens digit. But before we do that, because it's in the tens place, we need to write a zero in our ones place. Now, two times three is six, and four times three is 12. So we can add up our answer lines. Eight plus zero is eight, 7 plus 6 is 13, so 1, 3. 1 plus 3 plus 2 is 6, and nothing plus 1 is 1. So our answer is 1,638. Now, 2.06 times 100. Whenever we're multiplying or dividing a decimal, by 10, 100, or 1,000, we start in the same way. That's by writing out our decimal and then copying down the decimal point underneath. Here, we're dividing, which means the numbers are moving to the left. Sorry, the numbers are moving to the right so that the number's getting smaller. And we're dividing by 100 which has two zeros on the end, which means the digits need to move two squares to the right. So we can copy this six down one, two squares to the right, do the same with this zero, and the same with this two. But now we have a problem, because this square after the decimal point, so the tenth square is empty, and the one square is empty as well. So if you have empty squares, it's really important to write in the zeros. So our answer is 0 0.0206. 0 0.8 is what over 100? Well, we know that the first place value column after the decimal point is our tenths column. So this 8 stands for 8 tenths. But we need to work out what is 8 tenths over 100. So we need to find the equivalent fraction. We do that using multiplication. We know that 10 times 10 is 100. And what we do to the top, sorry, what we do to the denominator, we need to do to the numerator as well. 8 times 10 is 80, so 0 0.8 is equivalent to 80 over 100. Now, 7.3 plus 1.48. Now in this question, it's really, really important to write out the column addition with the decimal points lined up. Because if the decimal points are lined up, then all of our other place values, our ones, our tens, and our hundredths will be lined up as well. We can write zero in empty squares, and so that we don't forget, let's copy the decimal point down into our answer straight away. Now 0 plus 8 is 8, 3 plus 4 is 7, and 7 plus 1 is 8. So our answer is 8.78. Find 3 sevenths of 700. So to find a fraction of a number, or to multiply a fraction by a number, we need to divide by the denominator and then multiply by the numerator. And the way I remember that is divide denominator, then times top. So we need to start with 700 
divided by 7 divided by the denominator. 700 divided by 7 is 100. Because 7 divided by 7 is 1, then if we have two end zeros in the number we're dividing, we need two end zeros in the answer. But now we need to take that 100 and multiply by 3, so multiply by the numerator, and 100 times 3 is 300. Again, in a multiplication, if there are two end zeros in the question, there will be two end zeros in the answer as well. So, we've divided by the denominator, then multiplied by the numerator, so our answer is 300. Now, four-fifths plus one-tenth. So, we have a problem. To add or subtract fractions, we need the denominators to be the same. Now, the easiest way to get the denominators the same is to use equivalent fractions, and because 10 is in the 5 times table, we can easily change 4 fifths into a fraction that has a denominator of 10. Remember, we use multiplication to find equivalent fractions, and 5 times 2 is 10. And what we do to the bottom, what we do to the denominator, we need to do to the top or to the numerator as well. 4 times 2 is 8, so now we can rewrite our question. Instead of 4 fifths, we can write 8 tenths, because we found out that 8 tenths is equivalent to 4 fifths. So now we can add 1 tenth. When we're adding fractions, the denominator stays the same and we just add the numerators. 8 plus 1 is 9, so our answer is 9 tenths. Now we have 1 and 3 quarters times 5. So we need to multiply a mixed number by a whole number. The way I like to do this is to split up the mixed number. So we can multiply 1 by 5, then multiply 3 quarters by 5, and then finally add up our answers. So 1 times 5 is 5. And then we need to work out 3 quarters times 5. But when multiplying a fraction by a whole number, we need to be careful because we only multiply the numerator. So 3 times 5 is 15, but we leave the denominator the same. So we have 15 over 4. But now we need to change that into a mixed number. Remember, a fraction is really just a division, so we can work out 15 divided by 4. That's 3, remainder 3, and the denominator stays the same. So 15 quarters as a mixed number is 3 and 3 quarters. So we've multiplied 1 by 5, We've multiplied 3 quarters by 5 to get 3 and 3 quarters. So finally, we just need to add up our answers. So that totals 8 and 3 quarters. There is another way of solving questions like this. So there is another way to multiply a mixed number by a whole number. And that's to turn the mixed number into an improper fraction. We can do that by multiplying the whole number by the denominator and then adding the numerator. So 1 times 4 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So as an improper fraction, 1 and 3 quarters is 7 over 4 because we leave the denominator the same. And we're multiplying by 5. So, again, like here, we need to remember 
that we only multiply the numerator by the whole number. And the way some children like to remember this is write 5 as 5 over 1. Then 7 times 5 is 35, 4 times 1 is 4, or keep the denominator the same, and we have an improper fraction 35 over 4. If you change that back into a mixed number, notice 35 divided by 4 is 8 remainder 3, and the denominator stays the same.